Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to DRS Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, this video is part two of a two-part video. So if you haven't seen part one, I'll pop a link up above here. You can go check that out. That's on taking the guitar to the point where I put the primer and the sealer on it and it's ready for paint. So part two is gonna be taking the guitar the rest of the way until we come up with the finished product. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around, consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications. A couple comments, good or bad, it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to check out all those Amazon affiliate links and all my other links for the products I use in this video and all my other videos. And with that, let's get started. Well, all right, I got three coats of the Autoborn sealer on now. I'm happy with the way the guitar looks and you know, how to bring it back after each coat. Check out where, you know, if I had any indentations or dings left in the guitar, rework them. So wound up taking three coats until I got all of that worked out. So we're done with the sealer now. Happy with where that's at. So now we got a nice base down to do our next part. So what we're going to do next is I have some W425 Hot Rod Sparkle Red. Now I'm not quite sure why they call it red, but basically it is like a pearlized or a pearl type of white. And of course it is made by Createx on their Wicket line. And we're gonna take, and I got a, about a three ounce cup that I'm gonna be shooting out of. So this is a two ounce bottle. I'm gonna be mixing most of this. I'm gonna be putting 10% of our 4050 UVLS gloss clear in here to make it like a urethane. And I'm gonna be doing 10% of that with this. Now, when we go to mix the Candy 2.0, that's a different mix ratio that I'm giving you now for the paint. So we'll, we'll leave that for when we get to it. And then I'm gonna be going 10% also with the 4011. So let's go. All right, I do want to mention it's really important that you mix these up really well. There's a little marble or a little ball in there. Same thing with your 4050 gloss. You want to make sure everything's shaken up really, really well, and especially with these pearls and the metallics. I mean, you're going to have to shake these for, I sit here and literally shake it for about a good minute and a half, two minutes, even longer if I have to, but usually about two minutes is a uh, you know, good mix because all of the metallics or the pearls settle to the bottom and you really want to give it a good mix and make sure it's all mixed up. If you let these sit for any length of time, everything will start to settle back down. So you want to give it a good mix right before you're ready. I got about an ounce and a half in there. Very little left, but we'll leave just a little bit. Boy, I don't know if you can see that, but that is really, really, you can say, you know, sparkly or pearlized. All right, now to bring this up to the other, get this close to our three ounces, I'm going to go ten percent of the forty fifty. I'm going to do 10% of the 4011. So I'm going to give this a really good mix. And once I mix it up, I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes, let it all emulsify together. And that'll happen while I go over and get my spray gun set up. And I'll see you in a few. All right, so I was getting ready to spray coat number two and something really interesting happened. I noticed as I was spraying coat number one toward the end that my air pressure was going down and I didn't understand why. So I finished the coat when I was off camera, I took apart the whole gun, couldn't figure out what was going on. If you ever see my video on the Mac valve on an airbrush, the micro air control, this has it also. It's basically a Mac valve. Okay, now listen. Very little air pressure, right? And my finger must have been hitting it. So now listen as I...
You hear that? All right, so I'm gonna take that valve all the way out and we should be good to go. Here we go, with coat number two. All right, well, it's time to start laying the flames out. So I'm gonna pull out some eighth inch fine line tape. And what I really love about this tape is it's very flexible, very repositionable. As you can see, I could lift it up, put it back down. So I'm gonna draw these out with my finger here in the tape, just like as if there was no obstructions in my way, as you can see. I'm going right over where the pick guards would be. So a lot of this flame is gonna be hidden actually by, you know, guards and covers on the guitar but I want to lay them out and have the flames on that if the covers aren't on I still have the flow of the flame that I'm trying to do so I'm going to take the flame from the front I'm going to wrap it right around to the back so it's going to continue from the back of the guitar or the front right on to the back of the guitar And I'm gonna take my masking out, and I like to use this type of masking rather than a whole bunch of little pieces of masking tape. I know you can do it that way too. But this is a 12 inch vinyl masking tape or transfer tape. And I use it for most applications like this, where I have large applications, you just wanna squeegee it down, nice and flat, get all the air bubbles out of it. It just makes it so much easier. I'm just putting some relief splices around just so, you know, I could get it to sit into the contours of the guitar. All right, so now I got my gold pearl. You wanna make sure that's shaking up well, as I said before. Load it up in the gun, and now I'm painting this as a ghost flame. So I'm basically adhering to the edge of the fine line tape, or basically 50% off the tape, 50% on the guitar. In hindsight, I should have went a little bit darker, or actually a lot darker on this flame, based on the amount of candy coats that I wound up putting on the guitar. But nevertheless, it still created a really cool effect. So now I'm gonna come back in with some silver actually, and I'm gonna hit the middle of the flame, just to add a little bit of flair to it. Right, and I got my weeding tool out. Again, don't use an X-Acto blade here. The weeding tool is always the best. An X-Acto blade, you'll wind up nicking or scratching the surface. As I'm taking the tape off here, you can start seeing the gold flame become a little bit more apparent. All right, now I got my cup, and this cup here has ounces because this mix here is going to be a six to one mix. Okay, so if I'm going to go three ounces, that means I need a half ounce of the candy. And that would give me my six to one. And then I'm going to do 10% of the 4011 as well. You want to take your time to really mix this up. You can see the UVLS clear on the side of the cup. You're gonna see, I'm gonna scrape that off the sides. And again, you wanna take your time, mix this up, let it sit for a good 10 minutes before you actually use it. All right, now I got the candy all loaded up in the gun. And this first coat, I'm going to be putting on a light even coat with 50% overlaps. And it's amazing, you'll see 
with each coat how deep and dark the candy gets. Okay, so coat number two. You can just see it deepen up already on that second coat as it's going on. That's the cool thing about candy. The more layers you put on, the deeper and darker it'll get. All right, so one last thing I want to share with you is that I want to show you that things happen, okay? You don't expect them to happen, but when they do, you have a choice. You either start over or you improvise. So basically what happened here to me was I had it all cleared. It looked absolutely beautiful. The gold ghost flame behind didn't come as dark as I wanted it to, but I was okay with that. But... I kept looking at it and I kept seeing these little, two little white specks in the guitar. And I thought it was in the clear coat. So what I figured I'd do is I'd take some 1500 and I'd sand down and just sand them out. Well, I sanded down to the color through the clear coat and just to the color and realized it wasn't in the clear coat. I don't know how or why I missed it, but it was these two little white specks, I want to call it that I thought was in the clear coat, it wasn't. So I had a choice at that point. You know, I could scrap it and start over or I could improvise. So what I decided to do was improvise. So I already had black pearl going all the way around. The two specks were right here, okay? So I already had black pearl going all the way around. So what I decided to do was put a ghost flame of the black pearl that wraps in the front around to the back, okay? So you can see that. So this time, the gold flames don't come all the way up. So, but before I can do that, I had this glossy coat of clear on, so I was gonna have to knock that down. So I just took my smoothing scuff pad and I scuffed it all back up and got that shine off the clear and then put my airbrush on, you know, retaped it out with the flames, just like I did before, put my black pearl flames on, and now I'm ready for clear coat again. I'm gonna use, you know, same can clear or two part clear in a can. I'm gonna finish this up. So we'll see you in a few minutes to see the end result. All right, there you have it. Done clearing the guitar, looks absolutely amazing. Came really good, the clear went on really well. So just to recap what I did with this guitar was after doing the body work on it, I put the Createx sealer on it white. Then I went with a base coat of Hot Rod Sparkle Red, followed by I went with a Gold Goose Flame over top of that Hot Rod Sparkle Red and a little bit of silver up through the flame. Well, I wound up putting a little bit more coats of the Candy 2.0 on which was the Dirt Track Brown. When I did my test pattern, I did about three coats. Well, when I was spraying the guitar, I actually was liking the way it looked. I went a little bit more, I did five coats. So it really kind of covered up that gold flame. So 
So the gold flame is still in the guitar, but you really, really got to turn the guitar into the light. The camera probably won't even pick it up, but it really did leave a cool effect because depending on how you turn the guitar, you can actually see that gold flame. Well, I wound up clearing it and I found a little bit of a blem or two little white marks here in the guitar. And I thought it was in the clear coat, as I mentioned earlier, sanded down, got down below the, right below the clear coat, didn't damage, you know, any paint below. But I had to stop there and I had to make a decision what to do. Well, the decision I made was, being I had already put some black pearl going all the way around the guitar, I decided to blend in a ghost flame with black pearl coming up off the bottom of the guitar and only bringing the flame, I'm not sure if the camera will pick up on it, only bringing the flame up to around here and in the back as far as about here. Okay, now what I did there is the rest of the flame actually blends into the gold flame. And again, it's so light, unless the light catches it right, I don't think the camera will really pick it up. But it really is cool sitting here or standing over it and looking at it. So the black ghost flame runs into the gold ghost flame. So I have a, one ghost flame is down under one clear coat, and the black ghost flame is on top of the candy where, again, the gold one is under the candy. So it's kind of like this two layered look of a ghost flame. So really, really cool. Couldn't be more impressed with the 2K clear in a spray can. I do have a video on 2K clear in a spray can. It's actually spraying this particular guitar. I'll pop a link for that above. So I hope you like this video. I hope you got something from it. If you did, you know the drill. Consider subscribing, hit the bell. A couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to check out my Amazon affiliate links and all my other links down below. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.